Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. We're going to clear out this basement, uh, and I voiced my concerns about these double stairs in the building. Basically in Cataclysm the stairs are weirdly connected sometimes, so if we come back up the stairs we just went down there's a chance we'll pop out here, and there's a ton of monster density in this park because somebody decided all the parks should have tons of monster density. So, we're going to be careful. We're going to go down. Okay, pretty big basement. Heard some things over here. So there's probably an enemy. There we heard something else. I wish... There we go. Uh, heard footsteps. So probably an enemy approaching us. They smelled us in the darkness and came over to meet us. Looks like we're going to be able to kill them before they get to do anything. Okay, let's move around a bit. Not hearing anything else, but that doesn't mean that the basement's clear. We don't have the means to pry open these crates. We would need a crowbar, which we could make a crowbar. I think, so the makeshift crowbar is the one we would craft if we look in our inventory. Crow. We can make the makeshift crowbar. You'll see it has a prying quality of one, uh, which is not good. So there was a change recently where prying quality high, uh, two or more is required to open doors and windows which is why we don't uh, have easy access to doors and windows anymore. It's why we're using the lock picks. Uh, however, I think one is still enough to pry open crates. Now crates mostly don't have very good stuff in it. You'll see even the open ones are empty. A lot of times you'll open a crate and it'll be just garbage. So I'm not super concerned about that. Grab this duct tape, of course. Tape is very good. We've been finding a lot of it since they upgraded the junk drawers. Here's a mop. We'll take that just to see if we can clean the blood in our shelter. Sweater and cargo shorts, not super relevant. Cargo shorts are fine. It's just, uh, in, and in the summertime they have some value. We'll take them, but we won't need them probably for a while if we ever wear them at all. Socks are not super relevant. Family just got home. My pupper is crying because he wants to go down and see them. Just clothing we don't really want. Check the closet. Oh, it's a bathroom. Uh, again, we'll just keep taking soap and whatnot as we see it. The tray pan is an antibiotic. Uh, I don't know if we've seen that yet. Calcium tablets. So there's a system in Cataclysm about vitamin deficiency that will cause problems. So like if you don't get enough calcium in your diet, every food item has, has calcium and, and various other vitamins in it. Uh, it depends you know, per food what vitamins are where. Um, but if you don't get enough calcium, you will get a calcium deficiency and that will cause some problems. Unfortunately, as of this recording, that is not in the game anymore. Oh, it's in the game. It's just not active anymore. So like my character is never going to get a calcium deficiency because vitamin deficiencies are not really enabled in the game anymore. Um, that will likely change in the future. I'm guessing when they do the health system rework, um, they'll probably tend to vitamin deficiencies as well. But at the moment, there's really no reason uh, for that and and it's not super concerning we don't need to drink so we won't drink out of the water heater uh, here we found a wrench in the tool area but there's really nothing else so I'm gonna save and we're gonna go up these stairs and it popped us up the good stairs so that's good uh, we don't have to worry about I was gonna just save scum honestly because if it put me on these stairs I would have just been furious uh, and I would have been unhappy Trench coat, they're cotton, unfortunately, which we've talked about multiple times. Pea coat is a pretty decent garment if you don't have anything else. It is very warm and heavy, um, but it has a, a protection of four and four, so it can be okay in the early game. We don't really need that. So I think we're gonna head north here and just see what kind of monster density we see. We do see a zombie, uh, which may be alerted to us in the future. I would like to get eyes in the survivor house Southwest and below. No, don't step in the rose bush. We hear things inside this building and we now see a fat zombie to our west. Uh, oh, thought I heard the music cue for seeing a horde. Brainless zombie. So there's some monster density to our north. Let's take a peek around this corner. Okay, feral runner. Feral runner. Uh, feral runners tend to move in packs, by the way. So if you see one, there's a good chance you'll see a couple more. Um, we actually don't see that much density over here, but we're not on a good spot because there's this outcropping. Uh, oh, is there not an outcropping? Oh, it's the trees and bushes, I guess, and this column obscuring our vision. So we can't fully see what's on the road. Those feral zombies are very likely to get a whiff of us. There's a child zombie I didn't see. Let's back up and start backing up. Looks like they came out of the building a little bit. 
We're going to move back just in case those feral runners do get a whiff of us uh, because they have very good, I guess they hear really well or they smell very well because I very often, they find me. Even in the darkness, feral runners will be very quick to track me down. Yeah, that's my fault for not backing up uh, after that. Back up, take some swings. Back up, take some swings. Again, child zombies can be hard to hit because they are small targets, which I think is a bit silly because it's still a child-sized target. And because Cataclysm doesn't differentiate between um, child and teenager zombies, there's really no way to know what they are. It's kind of a catch-all for like, well, they might be in high school, they might be in middle school, they might be in elementary school. We really don't know. We just know they're kids. Um, I usually, in my head, they're like 10-year-olds. So I don't know if that's... That's probably not canon, but it's, you know, in my head, they're like middle schoolers. So, you know, if you think about like, why is it hard to hit them when they're, you know, I mean, I mean, I have a niece, she's like six, she's probably three and a half feet tall. You know, she's not a tiny, it's not like trying to hit a, a fly. You know, it's, there are giant mosquitoes in the game and it's like, or, or giant, what are they mosquitoes? giant wasps, things like that, that are sizes of like a cat or whatever. And it's like, okay, that's pretty understandable. It's a small target. It moves pretty quick. Maybe it flies. Uh, but this is like a child zombie. It's not a small target. So it always really bothered me that they were hard to hit. Anyway, uh, we found a SIG. Uh, this is a handgun. It's our first gun. So it's, um, despite being a three, so, okay. Guns and Cataclysm, let's talk about guns, uh, are extremely valuable. Uh, for a lot of reasons, mostly they insulate you from damage by letting you attack from range. Oh man, I was gonna make a ranged weapon. That was uh, the I couldn't remember when I when I started today. I was like, I had two videos in mind. I wanted to do one where we tried to interact with our NPC, and then the other one was to craft a, a basic ranged weapon because we didn't have one, and I completely forgot about that. Oh well, well we have a pistol now. Anyway, ranged weapons are very good because they you can attack from a distance, which protects you from taking more damage, which means your, your weapon gets less likely to, to take damage, your armor is less likely to take damage, your health is less likely to take damage. All this is really valuable. That's why we're using the reach weapon is to insulate us from that damage. So guns are very, very good for that reason. Now, guns damage. So if we, we scroll down, there's a lot of information. Let's pick it up. Let's pick it up and look at it in our inventory. This is going to become a gun episode, I think. Okay, so guns uh, have a lot of the same information that weapons have. So for instance, here we have a negative two to hit and it has eight bash damage and it takes 84 rounds to attack. Really important to note, this is not the gun bullet damage. This is the, if you're holding the gun and smacking enemies with it in melee, this is the stats. So obviously hitting them with a handgun, minus two to hit, very low damage, pretty not good. Like hitting, hitting a person with a gun will hurt them very badly especially if it's in the head region but obviously eight bash is not exceptional we get more damage out of that from a pipe or a a two by four as we go down we'll get more information about the gun so this is currently using a magazine called the p320 it's a 357 sig magazine so it's probably only for sig pistols um, and it contains 357 ammo it can only accommodate 357 ammo Current capacity of this clip is 14 rounds of 357 ammo. But if we look, you'll see it only has 12 rounds. That's just the capacity of the gun. It's not its current ammunition. Next, we have maximum range. This is the maximum number of tiles at which we can fire this gun. Um, once we go beyond that, it will not let you fire, I believe, is how that works. It just simply will not let you shoot. We have the base aim speed. Now, guns are very complicated and confusing. They have multiple... As we look down here, they have multiple different dispersions that function together to determine how accurate your fire is. There's recoil. That it's just a lot of stuff going on. I do not know 100% of the math behind it. So like aim speed, the better the aim speed, the faster you will reach these stages of aim. When you aim at it, oh my goodness, there's so much to talk about. Let's wield the gun. Let's not shoot the gun. Let's save. Um, because I don't want to get killed. In fact, we'll just save and we'll go test and then we'll just debug back to where we were or we'll reload our save uh, back to where we were. So let's go up here and let's uh, press the F key to fire our gun. Now it defaulted to the brainless because that's like the closest one. I see somebody got killed in here. I didn't think about that. D 
debugging up here did give us more information than we had previously that we can't unlearn. So it is a little cheating, but again, tutorial playthrough, I don't think it's a big deal. You'll see we have four aims listed here. This is different because we have not seen this with our range, our reach weapon. This is our current aim. The first one is our current aim. It's represented by plus signs, asterisks, and vertical pipes, and I guess blank space. And here it explains what those things are. A asterisk represents a critical, a plus is a normal shot, a vertical pipe means we graze them, and then black space means we'll miss. So this is a visual representation of what kind of shot we're going to get off. So at our current aim, we have like two pluses, which means there's a very tiny chance we hit this target at all, and if we do hit them, it's going to be a normal hit. Um, we can adjust our aim in multiple different ways. You'll see there's a lot of information down here. The main ones is to quickly jump to one of the preset aims. This will proceed the time in the game, progress time in the game until you reach this aim level. Uh, or we can manually aim over time, So, which is what I do 100% of the time. So if I press A, which I will, time will pass, 195 moves will pass, about two seconds. Uh, so two movements of the enemies. And our, our current aim will jump up to this value. So I'm gonna press A. Uh, monster spotted. So it's prompting us and saying, hey, you're doing an action that's taking time. We saw some movement. We, you saw a monster. Do you want to stop aiming? So we're just going to ignore this. Oh, never mind. I, I'm wrong. So when we press A, we're not waiting to fill the aim. That's just automatically going to proceed to that aim and then fire. I thought what it would do is update our current aim to this value. But what it does is pass this time till you get to this and then fire automatically. So I would not recommend doing that. Um, and we could do that for all three. Basically all this means is that you're taking longer to aim up your shot. So the precise aim is the best chance of hitting, but it takes the most moves. Now I don't use those buttons. That's why I didn't know how it works. What I do is pass time manually until I'm ready to fire. So this guy is far away. We have a current aim of three pluses and a pipe. That's not very good. So I'm gonna press five on my, my numpad and you'll see our aim jumped up. That's because a, a small amount of time passed that has allowed our aim to get better. You can also press the period key. Oh no, period to steady yourself for 10 moves. Yeah, that's the same as pressing five. So 10 moves progress. So in 16 presses of this key, we will be at this this aim. So the reason I do manually is because I can decide when is enough and when I should run away. So if I slowly pass time, the enemies are going to continue moving towards us as we accumulate aim. And you'll see we're now at precise aim. So this is like as good as it gets for the current distance, but I can continue passing time and letting the enemies come closer and our aim getting a little bit better until I'm ready to fire. And the, the optimal way to do this, the way I prefer doing this, is to wait until we are completely filled with pluses. That way we guarantee a hit. If we fire now, we have a pretty decent chance at getting uh, a critical. It's not amazing, but it's okay. Uh, we have a great chance of hitting our target regardless. All three of these symbols represent hitting the target but a graze is only like one, it's only a few points of damage. So we have a great chance of hitting our target for at least a normal amount of damage, an okay chance of hitting them for a critical, and an, uh, a slightly not great chance of, of uh, grazing them, which we really don't wanna do. And then we have a tiny chance of missing. So what I would prefer to do, I'm gonna wait until I would feel, I would feel comfortable firing now. Um, because I, I guarantee I'm going to hit them for at least the normal amount of damage and there's an okay chance of a critical. If there's one enemy and I know that I'm in a safe position, I will wait until it's all the way up at a critical uh, because you can get a full bar full of the critical hit. Uh, you'll see now because we have the uh, feral runner that's within range of us, he'll start attacking us and every time we get attacked our aim will drop. So now would be the time to fire in this situation. Uh, we if, In this situation we would have fired several turns ago and started to retreat. Um, and then honestly, I wouldn't even be in this situation because I would never put myself in this predicament. But that is how aiming works. So let's uh, reload our save here and we'll go back to looking at gun stats. So 
aiming is a is a is an art you will learn when you can fire when you can't fire it's something you'll learn over time um and then that is what the aim speed reflects the better your aim speed the faster you will increase your aim quality is essentially what that means um, hopefully that all makes sense it really is something you can trial and error pretty easily um, but and and honestly just read that menu because it, it tells you everything you need to know in this menu um, so yeah let's um, let's continue looking at our gun see what we've got going on we also have a damage line damage is dependent on caliber so 357 by default will have 32 damage um, certain guns will modify this in a plus or minus. So let's say we have uh, six different 357 guns. Some of them might have two plus 32. Some of them might have negative two plus 32. This, I guess, is to reflect muzzle velocity or something from a particular firearm. Although I think that's, isn't that like 100% dependent on the ammunition as well? I'm not sure how guns work in real life. I don't, I'm not a gun guy. Um, but so this will be slightly modified, but the like 99% of the damage will be coming from the caliber. So if you get a nine millimeter gun, that's worse than a 357 damage. Uh, 22 deals less damage than a shotgun damage um, of really of any caliber uh, shotgun. You still call it a caliber when it's a shotgun? Is it bore? I don't know the words about guns. But so here we have our damage, which is like 99% based on the, the ammunition type. So that's fine. 357, solid round, pretty good damage. Armor piercing, no idea how this works. I assume that it's armor piercing. So like if they have armor, this will basically increase, uh, decrease the value of that armor for the purposes of dealing this damage. That would be my guess. Uh, I'm not really sure how that works. I never really look at this number because it's not super relevant. Most of the time when you're using a gun, you just want to kill something. So I, I would guess higher armor pierce would be beneficial against armored targets but other than that do you really need to know the exact math behind it i don't know what the exact math is so armor pierce i'm again going to assume that this is based on the ammunition type so here we're using jacketed hollow points those are like generally used for soft targets they're not really intended to be armor piercing um because i think they don't they fragment like isn't that the whole thing with jacketed hollow points they're hollow they they fragment I don't know guns very well, but this is obviously not the same thing. If we had full metal jacket, uh, let's say it would be a, a higher armor pierce would be my, my guess. Um, if you got things that uh, are clearly armor piercing ammunition, it will have better armor pierce. Dispersion um, is, again, dispersion, sight dispersion. Uh, these things affect your aim. I just don't know how. I also don't know if higher or lower is better, so don't ask me. Sight dispersion is the amount of dispersion from our sights. Cataclysm, the modding system, is a little bit wonky. So like if you put a scope on your gun, it's going to change your sight dispersion. And it's going to change your aim speed. So it's like it's it's actually more harmful, it seems like, to put scopes and stuff on the gun. So I'm not sure if lowering dispersion is really good or bad. I, I really don't understand how that works. The fact that I've played this game for like two and a half years and I don't care about these numbers. Yeah, I would love to be able to explain everything to you, but the fact that I haven't used it in two and a half years should imply that like this is not a very important thing to take note of. Uh, or at least it may be important, but it at least is something you can ignore and still play the game because I've done it for a long time. So I, I don't know. You'll have to do some experimentation. You'll have to do some testing. I don't know if Vormithrax covered dispersion and how it works. I recently tried to do some stuff with gun mods in the game and was very confused and, and did not have a good time. Effective recoil, basically when you fire a shot. So let's say um, we aim at the uh, bush over here and we wait until we get our aim up. So we have this aim right here. If we fire this shot, it will drop our aim significantly and we'll have to re-aim, uh, re-wait to get our aim back up to the highest tier of the bar. So when you fire, it chunks down and it goes back up over time and it chunks down when you fire, it goes back up over time. That is what the recoil does. Uh, again, I don't know if higher is better or worse, um, but it's, a, it's what determines how much your aim drops between shots. And then reload time, I believe, is based on the magazine that you reload with. So this is probably displaying the reload time for this particular magazine would be my guess there. Uh, again, doesn't come up super often. 
Um, you can play without ever being concerned about reload time because you mostly will only be reloading in, in safe situations anyway. Um, or at least that's true for everything but a shotgun. If you're using a shotgun um, and you need to reload, obviously that's going to take time, so that's going to be an issue for you. If you're using a stick magazine like this is, uh, presumably just a stick magazine with, with 14 rounds in it, reload time is not super significant. You will have time to duck behind a wall, reload, and pop back out. Really not a concern. You shouldn't be reloading in combat in the first place. Next, we will get a display of compatible magazines. Apparently this one only has one that's weird. Usually they have many magazines that can be slotted into the same gun. Um, so there usually are multiple magazines that can go in a gun. I'm, I'm, I feel like there are more than this for this pistol. So I'm wondering if it doesn't always display all of them. Maybe it only shows your current inventory. I'm not sure. Oh, we skipped fire mode. Fire modes, some guns have multiple fire modes like semi-automatic, fully automatic burst. Um, it will tell you what they are here and then here next to the gun in our sidebar it tells us what our current firing mode is if we press capital F we will change between firing modes we don't have any other firing modes so it stays as semi-automatic um, but that's how you would shift capital F to change firing modes what else we got scroll down uh, we have all the weapon modifications. Depending on the gun, you will have different um, mod slots available to you. This particular pistol can handle two accessories, a barrel, a bore, brass catcher, grip, magazine, me mechanism, muzzle, rail, sights, stock, and underbarrel. Most of the time, I never mod my, my guns in Cataclysm. Mods, like I said, a lot of them have really wonky effects on the guns. Most of them are actually not beneficial. The one I mostly focus on is better magazines. Um, occasionally I will put a suppressor on a barrel uh, and really that's it. In fact, is that barrel or muzzle? That may be a muzzle modification. Um, that's really it. Sometimes I will try to change the stock um, if it makes it more storable uh, in our inventory and reduces the, the volume of the gun I will put on a different stock. That's really all I do. I never put sights on it because most of the sights seem bad to me. Um, I know some people really enjoy modding their guns in Cataclysm. I just don't think that it's... What I would like is for it to basically be Escape from Tarkov uh, rules. Is how, like the best way I... Like, that's the game with the absolute best gun modding I've ever seen in any video game ever. I would love to see stuff like that come to Cataclysm. Currently, it's pretty clunky. A lot of them have confusing... Um, like it, it doesn't even, if you look at the mod, it doesn't even relay to you the information about what practical change it will have on your gun. It's a little confusing. I just, I don't mod things and, and I, if you want to, that's great. I just, uh, I can't give you much advice there. Uh, guns do take damage and can be repaired. I would avoid bashing with them, smashing with them just because it will damage your gun and they require specialized tools to repair. They can be a little hard. You can craft these, but they require a ton of tools that can be a little bit hard to source. And then finally, we have um, fouling. Fouling is something that over time a gun will build up black powder fouling. This is just something that lowers the quality of your gun. Fouling can be viewed as a, a line next to the gun's name. So if we look, um, I guess there just isn't any. There would be a bar here that displays how much fouling it has. The fact that it says it down here makes me think that it is fouled. Reduces reliability, can cause damage to the gun. Not significant until high levels of fouling are reached due to firing thousands of rounds without cleaning. You can clean fouling, I believe, with a pipe cleaner. You just activate the pipe cleaner uh, and it will let you clear the fouling. So it says fouling, so I'm guessing there is some, but I don't see the bar. So it must not be very significant. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, yeah. Guns also have their damage reduced, I believe, by the health of their weapon. So like a lot of times when you find them on soldier zombies, they're very heavily damaged. Um, and so they will only deal two or three damage at a time. So definitely, definitely avoid that if you can. Repair them if you're capable. But otherwise, if you find a really damaged gun, honestly, I just leave them behind most of the time. Next, it tells you what this item can be stored in. This can be stored in a standard holster, which you would wear on your left or right leg. I'm not sure which leg it occupies. Um, bigger guns can only be stored in back holsters. Like if you get a grenade launcher, I don't believe you can holster it. 
You can attach accessories to guns, um, which includes a shoulder strap, so we could potentially wear this on our shoulder, uh, which would increase our torso encumbrance rather than putting it in a holster. Actually, for a pistol, you wouldn't put a strap on it, um, but for a rifle, you would, and then you would wear it over your shoulder. Contents of this item, this shows you what is currently on the item. I believe this will also show modifications. So currently, the contents of this item is just the stick 14-round uh, double stack box magazine for the Sig Sauer P320. Uh, and then at the bottom, we don't know anything we could craft with this gun, which makes sense. It's a gun. So, man, I don't feel super great about that explanation of guns. I think you probably got a lot of information out of it if you are new to the game and had no idea what you were looking at. But for the most part, I don't know some of this stuff and i just don't know how to explain it to you like obviously dispersion is like accuracy but because we can just wait as long as we want and increase our accuracy how much does it matter what the dispersion is what does it even really do there's really no explanation to it in the game and outside of looking at the code how am i as a player supposed to know what dispersion does so it's like i never learned it's been years i even worked on some weapon accessory stuff and I still never really understood what dispersion does so a little rough in the tutorial but I still think we relate a lot of information so we found a gun the other thing to note about guns is that guns make noise guns are loud in fact can we see noise anywhere I didn't see noise you would think it would tell you the noise it makes um, but no guns make noise so if we start popping off rounds right here uh, there's a small chance. It's a, it's a handgun, and it's a relatively not huge caliber, but 357 is not a small round, um, per se. It's, it's a bigger round. Um, I mean, obviously not as big as, like, a 45 or anything, but it will make noise. It's more than a 22. It's more than, like, uh, a pellet gun or whatever. There are BB guns in the game. Uh, obviously noisier than archery and whatnot. If we start popping off rounds, there's a chance that the enemies over here... In fact, I would say a pretty good chance that some of them would start migrating towards the sound of the shots. Again, lower calibers make less noise. So if we come up here and are blasting with a shotgun or a 50 cal, they're probably going to notice us. But a, a pistol with 357, it's not going to be a huge radius of sound. Um, but it's definitely, definitely something to be aware of, especially if it's dark. If it's nighttime and we're progressing through here and we see some enemies and we start shooting them, we have no idea what the area around us looks like so for all we know right across the street there's like eight zombies that all of a sudden hear our shots and are coming right at us so sound is is definitely something to keep in mind i mostly only shoot during the daylight uh, because it's so much easier to see the only exception to this is if i'm trying to take out a distant visible target that is dangerous and i don't want to get up close to like a shocker zombie then i will occasionally shoot at night because they're they're lit up at night so you can still shoot them uh, but that's really the only time I'll shoot at night because it's just so dangerous when you don't know what's around you. So uh, hopefully that explanation of, of guns helped you somewhat. Um, I really don't know what else to say about it. So I think we'll just call the episode there and we'll make this the gun episode. Hopefully that all made sense. Um, sourcing ammunition is something else that we should probably talk about. But it's like it's something you don't have any control over. Sourcing ammunition is virtually impossible. Um, because you can never know until you get there what is actually available. The only uh, real difference to this is that there are turrets in the game. They dominantly fire 5.56 ammunition now. So 5.56 rifles uh, in particular are very significant because there's a lot of that ammunition laying around the world. Um, there are different gun types. Gun types don't have a significant impact. Like obviously use common sense. Um, you're not going to try to shoot uh, from across the map with a shotgun. Handguns are generally something I keep as a backup in a holster, so I really only pull them out in an emergency when I, I'm in a situation where I actually do run out of ammo uh, and I want to quickly pull out another gun and try to fire. Rifles are the go-to kind of all-around weapon that most people use. Shotguns are good high damage uh, weapons, so if you're trying to beat say uh, a turret uh, and you want to guarantee that you kill it on the first shot a shotgun is a great way to go for that yeah rifles are the go-to i almost never use smgs uh, there are some proper machine guns in the game i almost never use those there are old-timey rifles like muskets and things i never use those um, i primarily use rifles and shotguns i pretty rarely use pistols but it never hurts to have a pistol in your back pocket so 
Yeah, I mean, this is stuff you'll learn as you progress in the game and you kind of learn what's valuable and what's not. Certain ammunitions are very rare. Certain are very common. 9mm is probably the most common after 556 uh, 22 is basically garbage in the game. Any of the mid calibers are fine, 357, 45s. Um, then there are some weird calibers, like I think there's .301 or something like that. And it's like that's a really pretty rare ammunition. So finding a gun with that is not super great. Um, uh, for 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 shotguns, it's double aught shot almost exclusively, unless that's been changed. Don't use pellet guns. That's just like laughably bad. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what else to say about guns. I think we've covered most of it. So for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more Cataclysm tutorial content in the near future. I'll see you next time.